Boy, do I have a treat for you today. Yep, I'm donning this dorky headset and everything to teach you about least squares regression. It's something you've probably done if you've ever taken a statistics class or done some work with it. But uh, you never really get the theory explained to you. Usually they just tell you how to calculate it using a computer calculator. Using Geometry Sketchpad, I'll kind of show you what it means to have a least squares regression line, and it's going to be a good time. All right, let's go. Okay, so here we have our six points that we'll be using to create our least squares regression line. First thing we'll do is use Sketchpad to create a line. So first, we'll put our point through here, which will represent our y-intercept. Then we create a circle so that if we create a line, we can adjust not only the y-intercept up and down, but also the slope. Isn't that cool? Okay, so we'll hide our circle for aesthetic reasons. And now we're going to make the squares themselves. I know, crazy. There actually are squares in the least squares regression line. So what we'll do is we'll create some parallel lines so that I can use this nifty little square tool I made in order to make the squares. As you can see, what's happening here is the vertical distance down is getting squared and it comes up with an area. The area is then added together with all the other areas and for the line to be a line of best fit we want that area to be as small as possible. So you can see how if I move these up and down the areas get bigger or smaller. But we don't really know how big the total area is yet. In order to find that I'll find the areas of these lines and we can measure the area. So here's all the areas and now we just need to sum them up. So we take this one plus this one oops, this one plus this one plus this one and that one and that one and that one too. So here we go. This is our total area. Now it'd be cool if we could make another square somewhere on here that would represent the total area of all those. And it's pretty easy to do. If we take this total area and take the square root of it, that would give us the side length which would make this total area in a square. So. We can do kind of what we did before, take a circle, and using that parameter, we can construct a circle plus radius and construct a square. Cool. So this square is now going to represent our total area. As this goes up and down, it gets bigger and smaller. So let's see if we can find, oops where our smallest total area is. Um, so, you know, you just got to kind of guess here and uh, play with these a little bit. You know, I, I don't know, it looks to be, I don't know, I'll just do a quick guess and say, you know, it's somewhere around, around here, I guess, because 5.77 or so looks to be about as small as we can get. So now, let's find the equation of this line. And this is our guess for the least squares fit. What you can do though is actually calculate using these points and their coordinates what the actual line of best fit is. And I did this earlier. So here are our x values and our y values. The sums of those and the sum of their products and the sum of the squares and so forth to find the m and the b. And we can I plotted this actually. And there's our line of best fit. Well, so I don't know, we were kind of close, but let's see. So our total area right now is 5.78. We move it down to where we calculated the line to be. We get 4.15. Yeah, so this is better than what we had, which is good. 
But now the next question would be, how good is this fit? Is there a way to calculate how accurate that is? And there is. If you've taken the statistics courses, you come up with an R squared value. And that just requires some more calculations here. And ours comes out to be 0.94. If you recall from class, the closer the value is to 1, the better the fit is for all the lines. So that's pretty good. Now, if we were, though, to take one of these points and move it, you can see that the R gets, you know, a lot smaller. Now, what this can tell us is that a least squares regression line is not outlier resistant which means if I have this outlier way over here, if it was outlier resistant, this line wouldn't change very much. It would still stay pretty accurate. But as you can see, 0.73, it gets less accurate by quite a bit even, if you do it right. So least squares regression lines are not outlier resistant. Another fun fact about these lines is that this method of determining a line of best fit was discovered by Carl Friedrich Gauss when he was only 18 years old. I think that's pretty crazy. He's a pretty smart fellow. But anyway, that's pretty much all there is to it. Well, hey, I'm back again. and I hope you had as much fun as I did. You should go tell your friends that you know everything you know about least squares, and I'm sure they'll be very impressed. Until next time, have a good day, and uh, I don't know, math is fun, and stay in school and all that. So, see ya.